I'm gonna tell you something. I'm Star-Lord. I formed the Guardians. Met a girl, fell in love, but then she came back. Came back in total. Oh, please. He left out some important information. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 yes, is now playing in theaters. It's the final movie in the trilogy and the latest in a very long line of Marvel films. If you're keeping track, this is the 32nd movie in the Marvel Cinematic right, Universe. And some more trivia for you. Guardians 3 is Degrees opening almost exactly 15 society. years after the first Iron Man film back in 2008. There's a lot to talk about, so we have no one <laughs> but two. Double Trouble, Eli Glasner, Jackson Weaver joining us for this. Jackson, you're going to start us off okay. by catching us up to speed. Number three. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you said 32 movies. There's a lot of backstory you need to understand to even start watching this. So a little bit of a rundown. We have Gamora, Peter Quill. They were in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Gamora was killed by her dad. Thanos brought back to life later. Her memory is wiped. She used to be in love with Peter Quill, can now not remember him. A lot of the movie is about him trying to, you know, 51st States inspire her to love him again. <laughs> Have a clip. I want you to watch and you can get a little bit of a view of what that part of the movie is like. Okay. Everyone else who died in the past stayed dead. Not her. Why? Was it the magic cliff? I don't know. That's some freaking Infinity Stone scientist. And some dumbass Earth dude who met a girl, fell in love. That girl died, and then came back a total dick. You left out some important information, but that is the gist of it. So you saw that's a big part of the movie, that kind of, I guess, love relationship, but also we get Rocket Raccoon, played by Bradley Cooper, one of the best live actors turned voice actors. Agreed. He does a fantastic job in this film of like going into his backstory of being a science experiment and you know how that related to where he ended up in the Guardians of the Galaxy. He has to get saved after he goes through this whole medical emergency. I don't want to spoil too much, <laughs> but that is the movie. Okay, I feel like it is one for fans for sure. Um, but Eli, you know, we have been hearing lots of early praise for this one. A lot of praise. For I'm in too. the minority. <laughs> I'm in the minority. Oh, okay. I, I, I was so underwhelmed by this film. I'm actually beginning to wonder, <laughs> am I aging out oh. of Marvel movies? Maybe. And I'm like, I could I could do like 30 days of reviews and have a new Marvel t-shirt every day. Like sure. I enjoy this stuff, but I feel that the, the song is not the same this time around, that the magic is gone. You talk about like 40% of this movie is Rocket going back to his little baby raccoon days and like figuring out that he used to be this little critter who was in a cage with an otter and a rabbit and a walrus and the yeah. high evolutionary who is this new villain that was experimenting on them and trying to like make them better. Now you'd think this would be kind of a cutesy maybe sweet sort of story. Let me give you a little te test, a little taste and then you're going to see what it really looked like. Take a look. I would like my name to be Lila. 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 That's a pretty name, Lila. <laughs> Thank you. Like what? How <laughs> lovely. But if you pull back a little, what you have is something like David Cronenberg designing Lady and the Tramp because uh, all oh of gosh. these animals have extra like appendages yeah. and like metal claws. It's like a cyborgian nightmare. And this is James Gunn, right? Yeah. James started as a horror guy and it feels like on his way out from Marvel because now he's heading over to DC. He doesn't care anymore. He is going to make oh, a mess. No, no, so no, he no, is no, giving no. us the most tragic, the darkest, most disturbing version of how Rocket started. I think the problem is that when the Guardians started, they were fresh, they were original, they were the outcast. But now, they are the establishment, they are mainstream. We've spent so much time with Star-Lord and Drax and Mantis and the rest that it's not that novelty has worn off. And so I, I just feel I, I like agree. it fades away. It does, we do, we have arrived at this point where we have stayed with these characters for probably way too long. Right. And actually, if you watch, you know, the kind of intermediary the movie, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, that really kind of 
brought all those relationships home. They had the buddy buddy moment. They came together. They had hugs. So like the question is, how do you make another movie that actually you know goes past this when everyone's you know together? They have all the emotions. The question is, all do you set. need to you make another movie? You don't need to. But you just Marvel, said watch the Christmas Marvel special. Marvel movie. does, but what they do a really realistic way of looking at this you know friendship as family ethos, where all these people are kind of broken, not doing well. I know we all have our own difficult family relationships, and they're not all sunshine and rainbows. Right. That is what this movie is. It's a realistic look at how this is all disintegrating. And I mentioned Fifty First Dates as well. You might have seen that movie, and maybe like myself, thought it was a little bit weird what Adam Sandler was doing to Drew Barrymore. This movie kind of does it right, where this is not a cool thing that Peter Quill is doing. And James Gunn, I think he really does care about his characters, because what he's doing is he's throwing animosity at, at them, this barbed, mature look, and it's the first kind of grown-up-ish Marvel movie that we've had in so long. It's really the only way he can do this well. I, I understand that, and I think mm. he is taking the Guardians seriously, but I think by taking the Guardians seriously, they lose their superpower, which was being silly weirdos. <laughs> and so, like, if Star-Lord is just a hero, if Star-Lord is actually good at his job, they're wearing uniforms now. They're a real super team, but then they're not the weird, strange group of ne'er-do-wells and outcasts that we fell in love with three movies ago. So, taking them seriously, I don't think it helps. Your rating. <laughs> yes. oh, I'm going to give it a strong four to five, wow. almost four and a half, because they are not the people that we once knew, but the action, the multiple climactic, you know, resolutions we get to, and just the, the narrative arc in this movie, I think, makes it land. Okay. I'm giving it a weak three Ooh. out of five, <laughs> saved by Howard the Duck. Cosmos, the telekinetic space dog, and Nathan Fillion, the great Canadian comedic actor. Okay, well, we appreciate the conversation, the dueling debate. <laughs> that was entertaining. I don't know if I need to see the film. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Thanks.